Hey everyone, it's Ophi. I just wanted to let you know that the TMNT Shadows of the Past Kickstarter Works uh, box set has finally come out in Northern California at least. Uh, other ones are on the way and seeing as how it's Thursday, most likely most of you are going to be getting your packages in the next couple of days here. Uh, but I just got mine and wanted to let some of you know in California, if you haven't gotten yours yet, uh, mine came by USPS, not UPS, and I did not get the uh, confirmation email or tracking number. Uh, nothing showed up in the UPS My Choice app, uh, which I signed up for on Tuesday uh, from people's comments in the Kickstarter and Facebook and BGG. Um, so if you're in California, don't worry you might still get it in the next couple of days without any notification whatsoever. Um, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, and, and careful since it's raining out there for a lot of California. But uh, just got my package. A lot of people have been having issues uh, being reported online for boxes being dented or broken or holes in them that goes straight through into the works box as well. Uh, mine did not have any issues like that. There's a minor dent that I'll show you in a moment uh, that I honestly don't know if it was even there when I picked up the box this afternoon. It might have been put there from my own handling of it. So uh, the Turtles box itself is just in the cardboard shipping box. There's no packing or anything like that in there, but it's it's a decently snug fit in there, so uh, I can see how some people are, are getting concerned on that. But let's take a look at the box. We're just gonna do an unboxing. I don't have uh, anyone here to play today, so we won't do a play test or anything like that, but uh, perhaps in the, in the near future, as I get some folks over here and grab some pizza and some bandanas and will throw down with the foot and old hob and some of the other guys from the idw world uh, which is a great world by the way uh, people had recommended it to me during the course of the kickstarter itself uh, and it is a mishmash of all the different continuities of teenage mutant ninja turtles that i can see so far uh, with nods to the original cartoon series 2000 series the nick series uh, the video games, the comics, the old comics. Uh, they even have covers, variant covers that are written by or uh, drawn by the original artist. Wonderful, wonderful series, great tone, great art, and uh, which does change every now and then. And I, I'm not a big fan of the artist changing because once I find a comic with an artist that I do like, it's jarring to me and it's, it's just not to my taste. But I haven't been following comics for very long, so uh, everyone tells me that that's the norm. So uh, it it is a little jarring if you if you don't like that kind of change with the art every now and then. But uh, most of the main artists will pop back in, and uh, the the art is really nice. The stories are really nice, and uh, lots of nods. So if you like the turtles from any incarnation almost certainly you are going to find something to like in that comic series. And, uh, and they actually give us the first issue in the works package if you got that. Um, and I believe it came in the standard Kickstarter package as well uh, with an alternate cover, which is nice as well. So let's pop open the box and take a look. All right, so I want everyone to know I, I had to open this at work uh, just because it was such an awesome thing. I'd actually come home on a fluke uh, after getting pizza at Little Caesars for lunch and just came home to check the mail and there it was uh, covered by our floor mat since uh, it was pouring down rain outside. But there it is, uh, the Works Pizza inspired box. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past. Uh, by Kevin Wilson, Kevin Wilson, and it's an IDW Games game. Um, 
says it's about two to five players with one of course playing the foot or the bad guys since there are some non-foot bad guys in there uh, mainly from the idw series comics like old hob who's a great character by the way um, now that i've gotten to know him from reading the comics i i love him i, I hope he keeps popping up uh, it says about 60 to 90 minutes play time i have heard reports uh, from others that uh, you can do some of the missions in about 30 minutes so this may be for a whole session of multiple games rather than one single game taking 60 to 90 minutes which is awesome because there are too many games on my shelf right now that are three to four to five hours of playing through to get through one single mission and uh, frankly we'd rather be playing a couple of sessions of D&D all at once and getting some levels on characters. Uh, it has a little neat birthday cake symbol there for age, uh, which is kind of cool. I've never seen people do that before, and it's it's kind of cutesy um, and, and neat, I, I think. Uh, so let's take this out of here. I already took the uh, plastic wrap off at work and just put it all back in the box exactly how I found it. So here we are, the works package out of the box. It's really tight in that box, so I can barely fit my fingers in there around that to uh, kind of shake it out. Um, and then around the sides, and they are about six, they're about six inches. They're really, really deep sides on this box. We, we also play Imperial Assault, and it's slightly smaller than this, I think. Um, also a huge box and and great game to throw that in there but uh, this is an enormous box like everyone's saying online um, neat artwork on this one all the Kickstarter exclusive ones had uh, art by the original artist uh, which is kind of cool and I'm getting used to it um, I, I'm even getting used to on the top you can see uh, all the turtles have their original red bandanas uh, before they had to change them to red, purple, orange, and blue for cartoon and toys and merchandising purposes because, you know, no kid uh, can convince their parents to buy all of a single particular turtle with different color bandanas uh, by their parents saying, well, hang on, you already have that turtle, let alone, hey, let's make them all the same red bandanas. Um, so here we have Michelangelo on the uh, southern face there. Uh, over in the east we have Raph, uh, Donnie on the north face, and Raph again. I, I don't know where uh, Leonardo ends up on this one, but uh, Raph Raf pulls double duty to the east and the west there. Um, so it's it's a really nice cloth kind of feeling uh, texture on the cardboard. A lot of people have been saying that they've been getting blowouts on the sides, on the corners here on the box, um, and, and these edges here. And I don't have anything like that. I, I feel for all of the guys that have those blowouts. Um, we kind of have the same issue with Imperial Assault. It is such a large box, such a deep uh, box that when you lift it off, usually, usually we will, oh, let's do this. Usually we will grab two edges opposite each other, pull out slightly like that, and that gives enough air so that the suction is just not pulling everything in ways that it just cannot work without something breaking to allow air to get out. Uh, that vacuum is just super, super strong. Um, so let's take a look at the, uh, let's, uh, I'll, I'll show the bottom of the box after I take everything out. So let's take everything out of here, one sec. So you see I have it lifted just slightly because I had to, it's it's flush with the bottom of the box, but we usually just pull out slightly like this, enough to put your fingers in, not enough to stretch it or anything, and we just slowly lift out, and that's plenty to get that out of there. 
Now it, it is really, really thin cardboard. Um, it's standard as far as, um, as far as I'm aware and as far as the board games that we have. And I have board games that my parents and my grandparents grew up with. So those are in our closet and, and yeah, they're torn cause they're, they're old. They're really old board games. They're not the original Monopoly, but it's a couple editions in. And you know, we have the, uh, the tape on them that has the string on the inside, uh, the string pattern on the tape and that keeps them together. Uh, eventually I'll probably do that with this just to keep it safe uh, from, from any kind of harm. But if you take it slow and give that little bit of breathing space, it's gonna be fine. You don't have to worry about the box at all. It's no big deal. Um, inside the box, we have a white envelope. A lot of people had been asking from the original unboxing at IDW Games headquarters if this was going to be what our, uh, our art is included in. For the Kickstarters, uh, we did get some really nice signed art from Eastman and it is just a white envelope. Uh, there's nothing nothing fancy, anything like that. Uh, so there's a couple of a couple of folks on Facebook who have given suggestions to uh, frames uh, at Walmart, a couple dollar frames. Uh, we have this nice one here uh, that was on the Kickstarter page and is also basically the cover art for the box. Uh, that one's really nice. Uh, nice thick paper, so that's cool. Um, I These are my second this is my second game where I've gotten anything like this and I don't really collect these things but these are actually really nice and I, I might hang these up in the uh, in the library um, you have Leo after a certain storyline that uh, hasn't taken place in this game yet some different foot with the uh, turtles there minus Donnie and then this really nice black and white one there. I, I actually really like that one. That was a good picture there. So we have the four there. I don't know if I'll, uh, uh, some other people have suggested getting a little binder with the archival plastic sheets to slide these into and keep it as like a coffee table kind of thing. Uh, that's that's a neat idea. I, I don't know if I'll do that or if I'll get just a big frame to have all four of these exactly like that. Uh, maybe a little space in between them. But those are the lithographs and I think they're really cool. I, I like the, the Leonardo one as well. I, I've always liked that one from the comics. That was one of the variant covers, I believe, but it was in the trades once those came out. Uh, moving along, they have the alternate art comic for issue number one. Uh, the rest of it, as far as I'm aware, is the exact same issue number one uh, that was originally released. I got them as the trade paperbacks, so uh, I don't know what exactly is different. Uh, they pitch the Ghostbusters comic as well, which looks really neat, but I haven't taken a look into it yet. Uh, but for those who are interested in getting into the IDW series, they do have a two-page spread of the volumes for the book, uh, plus all the micro-series, mini-series, extras, uh, crossovers like uh, TMNT and Ghostbusters, where they take place in the timeline here. I'm, I'm a little bummed that... Uh, and the annuals as well. I'm a little bummed that the Batman series does not take place in the established timeline. As, as far as I've heard, it is non-canon uh, because that was the thing growing up. As I remember, uh, my brother and I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, had the 
pajamas in the in the late 80s early 90s we had uh, the bikes from Toys R Us and the helmet and the knee pads that you could select your uh, bandanas and put those on there and they were stickers and you could be whatever turtle you wanted had the it, it was awesome we had tons of stuff birthday party things uh, had I remember the party wagon uh, a uh, table cloth for birthdays uh, which was still at my grandma's a few years ago until uh, it, it had gotten dirty and wet and otherwise I'd I'd have it here on the table right now to uh, to display all this on. Um, but my dad grew up with the Adam West Batman and the, the comics and all of that. He was a huge Batman thing. So whatever it was, Turtles and then Power Rangers, Batman could beat everyone. But X-Men, Batman could beat them. Always had a plan. He had all his toys, his Batmobile. He had Alfred. He had Robin. Batman could beat them. And that was that was always the fight between us is we always said, no, no, the turtles, oh, the, the Power Rangers, they have the Megazord and there's no way. And but, but Batman was there. And so for my dad's sake, I really wish that at some point that was canon. And so we could, uh, that the, the Batman crossover was canon. And so eventually we could expect some short expansion out of this with a Batman hero or ally at least that we could play with and I could have him come over and he could be Batman. I know some people talked about doing some customs. If I see him, I've got enough hero clicks out there of Batman that I'll do it. I'm going to make a Batman figure and invite my dad over to play cuz it's it's the turtles and Batman. So, here's the uh here's the rule book. Um they had this available online uh during the course of the the uh, wait for the game to come out, um, and I I've looked through it a couple of times, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this again before we get the gaming group over here. Um, uh, Tony Vargas was uh, the the guy that did the artwork on this game, and I just think it is phenomenal. Way to go! It's this is amazing. I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, and and Kevin Wilson, of course, I. You know, I haven't played the game yet, but uh, it looks great from what I've seen so far. So I'm, I'm hoping for a congratulations on there as well. Uh, but then we, we, we do have this guy here, Nate Murray, uh, in product development, who has been amazing during the Kickstarter and after the Kickstarter and during the uh, mailing process that uh, he's he's been front and center for all of this update stuff and sharing things with us and uh, great contact. He's He's got some major kudos from me for his work on the Kickstarter. Um, and then of course Eastman and Laird for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Without them we wouldn't have such amazing things. Um, right under the rule book we have the tokens, uh, different tokens for the map itself, uh, some cars, uh, KO tokens, uh, the evil pizza tokens, uh, which were added during the Kickstarter to some amount of uh, belly aching from some and some uh, uh, frustration with those, I remember. But all sorts of different things to add to your maps. The regular hero pizza tokens and uh, full pizzas and the partial slices. And then directly under that, all the dice, so many dice. Also something that we, we did during the Kickstarter, having having this change from white and black dice like these uh, into green dice with the custom colors for the turtles, uh, custom colors for Splinter and April and some bad guys and just all this amazing stuff that I, I can't wait to see. Uh, Casey, I believe, has some custom dice in there as well. Um, we have the... Adventure Comics, uh, book three and four, book one and two. 
and they are part of the uh, the covers in the original IDEW comic series that actually connect. And they're actually really thick, otherwise I would just spread it out and show you the entire thing, but uh, it's really nice thick uh, paper. It's it's like a it's like a semi gloss on the covers there. It's not super shiny, um, which is really nice because I have a lot of a lot of uh, books that are super super shiny and it's hard to read them sometimes at the table. Uh, you have the the IDW art for Leo uh, after a while versus this version originally, um, and, and originally they had the red bandanas as well, uh, which was a kind of neat. Uh, sequence in the comics um, the shredder who who is the shredder in this series this is the bad guy shredder this isn't the as much as I loved it this is not the original cartoon shredder this is more like the 2000s shredder he is the bad guy uh, and Karai who is his lieutenant uh, She's amazing. She's a great character herself, great character, um, but also a great combatant. Um, I, I love it when she pops up and they do her a lot of justice in that series. Um, then we go back to the uh, original comic art in color uh, for the adventure comic for the Kickstarter bonus battles. Uh, so this has things like the... Uh, a lot of people were worried about the the pack uh, tie-ins for April O'Neil, Casey Jones. Uh, since after the Kickstarter was set to go, we learned that they were going to get uh, their own missions and things like that, uh, similar to single pack heroes and villains for uh, Imperial Assault and, and Descent and a lot of other things, I guess. But uh, April and Casey have hero pack information in here. Uh, the turtle ally cards that were added in there so that if you wanted to use uh, non-turtles for your heroes, you could use the non-turtle heroes and still keep the heroes in the game as your allies that you call upon uh, instead of calling upon, say, April or Splinter or Casey Jones. Uh, the Save the Studio uh, map sheet campaign uh, there's a Kevin Eastman ally card in here uh, similarly the rooftop rush campaign and the fugitoid ally card a lot of people wanted that fugitoid and, and I'm sure still want that as a hero uh, uh, great news the bebop and rocksteady destroy everything campaign and villain sheets in here since everybody wanted those guys especially with that movie that came out in the summer um, uh, we have the Kickstarter Works Edition gets the Splinter Hero Pack as well. Uh, a whole bunch of Mousers, Mouser Villain Sheets, and the Panic Rules. Uh, everyone's really excited about those uh, for a, an, a more automated adventure. And still waiting for the single-player automated, fully automated rules. Uh, there's the Ultimate Shredder, otherwise known as the TPK Shredder. Everyone just, it's the Superior Shredder. Since they can't call it the Super Shredder, Ultimate, TPK, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to call it the TPK Shredder. You have the human Bebop and uh, mutated Bebop figures, human Rocksteady, mutated Rocksteady. Uh, you have the hero sheets for the turtles with Eastman variant art. It is just variant art. It's not going to be any different stats or anything, any different dice. It's just, just the exact same uh, rules for the character as the standard IDW art. Um, and of course the four lithographs. So and then we have our have our contents in there. Uh, and the Bebop and Rocksteady of course with the entire mission not the first mission uh, repeated like it was in the comic book. Um, unfortunately, it was an error on a PDF, I believe, in the in-store comic. Uh, there's some little plastic bags 
uh, like other games, for keeping your, for storing your heroes in once you have them going, uh, since they have some, some cards and dice and things to separate out for that. Uh, we have this neat little, I kind of wish I had two just to use as a bookmark. We have a round tracker for villain hero. Uh, that's pretty neat. I do like that it's uh, Leo and the Shredder. The only thing I would have done if it would have been different is uh, Splinter and the Shredder, but Leo keeps it with the Turtles instead of splitting off to a uh, supporting cast. Uh, there's an IDW Games advert in here, uh, which is kind of neat, if only because it lists Shadows of the Past and uh, shows, there you go, the two to five player game uh, with the April Ally card and the other box art and has the April O'Neil Adventure Pack with her box art, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, didn't know what the box art was going to look like on these guys uh, once we got single pack figures um, that's that's kind of neat it's not a blister so uh, and then we have a whole bunch of the cards for characters the allies with april um, april is also a, a really neat one from the comic series where she gets all sorts of nods to different very uh, versions of her um, you have your villain packs and apparently all the all the different villains come with different uh, play style decks that you can choose which one you want to play with to add a little bit of variety in there uh, we have Raph the Eastman variant art uh, up front on that hero pack Casey Jones and then a Bigger one with again Raph. So Raph and Casey get a lot of love on this one. That's that's awesome. I'm I'm gonna be teaming them up like there's no tomorrow. Uh, Raph gets his IDW art, uh, the more recent one, I believe. I believe that's the current version of his art. Uh, but as you can as you can see, it's uh, it's exactly the same uh, straight down the line, which isn't bad. But uh, for those who are hoping for something different, uh, you're going to have to custom it. Uh, they have a neat little plastic tray in here, which you can use to separate everything out and store it later. Uh, tiles, bunches of tiles. Uh, if you have ever played Super Dungeon Explore, uh, they're similar looking and similar sized to those. Uh, and there's a good, what do we got? Two, four, six. Two, four, six, seven, I believe, tiles in there. We have uh, Kevin's Kevin's office special tile uh, for the Works Kickstarter backers. Let's get that shiny plastic out of there. I like the dice, a lot of lot of neat dice. Uh, I'm gonna put this down for a second so I can grab the box out of the bottom. There's a little cardboard box that takes up half of this that has two trays for the figures. Be right back. All right, there we go. Two trays. Tons and tons of figures. Got a bunch of mousers in there. Uh, all the green ones, of course, are the main turtles. Uh, even the allies, the good guy figures that are not turtles, uh, are actually gray, just the same as the villains. Uh, so at this point we've got, here we go, uh, we've got Leo and Mikey, we got Raph, about to rip someone's head off, we've got the Eastman variant Raph. 
lot of people were complaining about the size size and I do have some size from a Kogoro class years ago and um, seen a lot of different variants on the size and yeah having having size that are really swords is kind of weird uh, I'd rather have the short size no matter what anyone complains about them uh, Leo the variant uh, is original or uh, original IDW Donnie uh, there's the variant Donnie uh, a lot of people are mentioning that Donnie has something going on with his head and all that is is the head isn't glued on correctly um, so that just needs to be taken off there and then glued back on um, there you go it just needs to be taken off and glued back on it's it's not a not a huge deal and of course Mikey there as well I, I really don't know if I'm gonna paint these guys as kind of a black and gray, like a monochrome uh, uh, variant for the Eastman art turtles, um, or if I'm going to paint them as the cartoon turtles that I know and love. Um, not sure on that yet, and, and then do red bandanas or colored bandanas, not sure. Uh, if I paint anything at all, the IDW turtles, of course, are going to be standard IDW colors, green and yellow and brown and bandana colors. Um, we have uh, Casey, uh, who's actually pretty big for a teen, uh, versus Hun here. Um, Alapex, awesome character. Uh, really hope to see more from her instead of just relegated to the IDW comics. Uh, she definitely needs some love, although she gets enough in the series itself. Uh, Splinter and uh, April using her uh, borrowed uh, power gloves that uh, a lot of people have complained she uses in one issue, but you know what? We have variant Batman figures and hero clicks that have different lantern core rings that they had in a panel or a page or something like that, so I'll, I'll take it. Um, April's also pretty tall, uh, especially next to Karai right there. She's a, a good two heads taller, so I, I'm not sure what happened on the scaling on that one. Um, especially next to uh, Human Bebop. Um, and then of course we have Mutated Bebop with his chainsaw. Uh, we have Old Hob, who's an eye patch wielding uh, fighter, brawler, boxer kind of cat uh, mutated. Uh, the TPK Shredder, who of course is huge and just screams Super Shredder repaint from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Uh, he's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to see what his card looks like. And then of course the IDW Shredder. Much, much smaller, as he should be. Uh, mutated Rocksteady with his sledgehammer. And then we have all the different versions of the foot. Bunches and bunches of mousers, as they should be. The giant foot soldiers, uh, along with some, some random street thugs. And then the generic foot soldiers for the foot clan. So those are the figures. Uh, give me a moment and I will pop open the bags to show off some of the cards that we haven't seen yet. Uh, and I flipped over the box. Here's the back of the box. There we go. Here's the back of the box. Probably the same art as the regular Kickstarter box. Probably the same art as the uh, regular retail box. 
but uh, IDW gets a nod. Pandasaurus Games gets a nod in there. And Nick, of course, uh, the current cartoon gets a nod in there. But this is, here we go. So it's actually not going to be exactly the same since it lists the Kickstarter Works assets in there. Um, and then the IDW Turtles there, uh, who just look great. A lot of people think they look soft, but you know what, for game tokens, I'm definitely going to take them. It's better than sorry. Um, and then the big three for the Foot Clan. All right, let's take a look at some cards. So we have here the ally cards uh, with the turtles added in there. Woody, of course, the pizza guy. Uh, Splinter, April, Casey. Angel, a uh, friend of Casey's. And Kevin Eastman gets his own ally. The Fugitoid gets an ally for now. Uh, we have the cards that you'll use for April, Casey, Splinter, the turtles themselves uh, and then the there are some let's pop right over those with there are some terrain cards uh, whether it's printed on the map or added like the cameras those are those tokens I showed you uh, and then we have the villain cards the villain deck cards and you this is where you get the choices uh, you got some red decks you got green blue and then there's some thugs down there uh, but they they have their own choices depending on how you want them to play. Uh, Shredder, Karai, Alapex, Old Hob, uh, and then the, the generic and special foot soldiers, um, the foot. Of course, we have all of the character cards uh, with the alternate art and IDW art turtles at the top uh, with their allies in there. No one for Mikey or uh, for Donnie yet, uh, so we got to throw in Alapex. But at some point we'll throw someone in there for Donnie. I'm sure we'll get another purple. And we have the Shredder, the Master Shredder card, the Ultimate Shredder card. Uh, there's even a section at the back of the rule book asking for our opinions on the Ultimate Shredder. Is he ultimate? Is he really that bad? As you can see. The Master Shredder card has a 99 evil, which we don't know what it does yet. And the Ultimate Shredder has infinite evil. Because he's just that bad. Uh, we have Karai, Old Hob, Alapex, some generic street thugs, ranged and melee, and some Foot Clan characters. Bebop, Rocksteady, and the Mousers since they get their own mission where they have to have a villain card. And there it is, everyone. This is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shadows of the Past, the works version of the Kickstarter edition of the game. Soon to be in retail. They haven't told us when yet. Uh, but it basically takes out three quarters of our table with all the leaves in. And I haven't even spread everything out. I'm sure it would easily annihilate my table. Um, but that is everything laid out, ready for you. For those of you that don't have it, be strong. Hold on there. For those of you across uh, the sea from the United States, it's all right. It's coming. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. You're going to have a whole lot of fun just looking at it. Haven't even taken anything out to play with it yet. Haven't even finished the rules yet. Uh, but this is beautiful, well done. Uh, the cards are nice, thick cards. Uh, the ones down here, the villain and hero cards, are nice and thick and sturdy feeling. Uh, they have a nice feel to them. Production on everything just is amazing. The dice are uh, not blurry at all. They're very clear cut. Uh, beautiful looking dice. I, I can't believe I have that many dice now just for one game. Um, it's it's amazing. I love it. It uh, I can't wait to put this on the table in a slightly more 
organized fashion than this and get some guys around the table with some pizza and maybe make some felt bandanas like my mom did way back in the day. So enjoy guys, it's coming soon and you're gonna get your turtles and then we're gonna get some more as they do expansions and single, single hero packs, uh, more cards, more dice, more figures, I'm sure more tiles down the road because uh, they have volumes and volumes and volumes. This is, I think they said about the first three volumes of the IDW comic run uh, and it only ramps up from there. There's all sorts of characters they could do. Uh, of course, a particular one that showed up in the movie this summer could easily throw him into the next set. So we'll see. I hope you like the review and uh, uh, unboxing of the Shadows of the Past Kickstarter Works Edition. Again, if you're waiting on it, be patient, be strong. It looks great, it feels great, and uh, all the joking aside about the magical air that's blowing out these things uh, from the Kickstarter updates and Board Game Geek. The air actually smelled great. I wanted to play this the moment that I popped the box top off and got a whiff of whatever magical air has been packed up in these things and shrink wrapped and whatever. Um, whether it's cancerous or what, who knows? I'll find out in another 20 or 30 or 40 years. But uh, I don't know. Kind of made me want to play. Maybe that's weird. But uh, one thing to check out uh, also, I was going to mention when I had the Ally cards out uh, Board Game Geek, they have in the files section a selection of three Ally cards for these creators, uh, which look exactly the same. They'll fit right in, uh, just print them out. They look great, they look fun. Uh, I, I have them, I haven't got any card stock on me at the moment uh, to try and match this and make them a little sturdier, but as soon as I do, I'm gonna print them out because it looks like a lot of fun to maybe throw into the Eastman scenario. That'll be fun. But if you like this video or wanna see any more, um, wanna see any Super Dungeon Explorer, Imperial Assault, uh, wanna see these guys painted up, anything like that, want to see anything out in the garage, uh, just like, subscribe to the video and the channel, and I'll pop some things on there. Uh, let me know if you have any comments, uh, any questions, anything you want to see, anything you want to see clearer, uh, anything you want me to go over. If you'd like to see a playthrough of the game, uh, I have a group I can play with and we can probably uh, do a run through of the game. Uh, to let you see about how it how it breaks down. I know there's a couple of videos out there, but uh, who knows, another one, maybe it'll change your mind, maybe you'll buy into the game once that comes out on retail shelves if you don't have it already. Um, I probably would have eventually. Um, I, I didn't go into a couple of other games in the past just because uh, they were similar to this concept, but didn't feel right about them. Um, there were a lot of bad feelings about the Kickstarter for Shadows of the Past, but I am very glad that I backed, very glad that I waited. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun, and you know, even if I can't get it on the table all the time, there's some great minifigures that I will throw up at my desk uh, on, the, on the computer monitor, and they'll look great. So... Uh, Take care, everyone. Be safe and stay warm. Good night.